The confirmation hearing for Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett is underway. An update from Washington. Plus, with Election Day now just 22 days away, the Maricopa County Recorder is warning about possible scams. And an 11-year-old goes on a joyride in a big yellow school bus. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. And now we are live statewide. So a big shout out to all of our viewers down in Tucson. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Trisha here. Let's head over to Team 12's Jen Wall in the Weather Center right now for a quick look at your forecast 411. Yeah, it looks like we are still wondering when fall is going to show its face across the desert. It's just so warm, but we'll start for northern Arizona. 70s over the next couple of days, maybe a wind gust or two up to about 15 miles per hour. Southern Arizona mid to upper 90s over the next few days, triple digits by Tuesday. Oh my goodness for Western Arizona, the White Mountains in the 70s and 80s. A gorgeous shot here from one of our 12 News Weather Watchers. Thanks to Kurt for sending this one in. And yeah, fall colors are in full swing in the upper elevations across our state. So we were getting some questions in today about where are some of the best spots to go check out those fall colors in Arizona? Well, how about Snowball, the Arboretum, Oak Creek, the Inner Basin? You have the West Fork hike. There are a lot of places as the leaves continue to change this season. Now, in the deserts, we're dealing with the possibility of more record breakers. So far this year, Phoenix has seen 142 days at or hotter than 100 degrees, and it looks like we could tie even break that number this week. Plus, individual record highs in jeopardy, not so much on Monday, but Tuesday and Wednesday we're looking at tying the record on Tuesday, possibly breaking it on Wednesday. Tonight we'll get down to the 70s in Phoenix, 60s around Tucson, 30s in Flagstaff, your seven day forecast. There's those records we're talking about, triple digits through Thursday and even warm into the weekend. All right, looking forward to those 90s again, Jen, thank you. Happening right now, Supreme Court confirmation hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett are underway as members of the Senate Judiciary Committee begin to make the case for or against her confirmation. Now, the timing is critical with the election just 22 days away. Democrats are furious over the election year appointment, while Republicans say they're following through with their responsibility. Nadia Romero's in Washington to break it all down. President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, appearing today before the Senate Judiciary Committee for the first day of confirmation hearings. The person appearing before this committee is in a category of excellence. Since the announcement of her nomination, Barrett has been at the center of a political firestorm. This is going to be a long, contentious week. The divisiveness the evident from the start president. of the hearings. Why are Senate Republicans so afraid to give the American people a voice about the future of the Supreme Court? Republicans are following the Constitution and the precedent. It seems Democrats would rather just ignore both. With the election just three weeks away, Republicans eager to confirm her expeditiously, but Democrats still are crying foul over the speed of the process. Senate Republicans are pressing forward, full speed ahead, to consolidate a court that will carry their policies forward. And over the nominee, as Barrett's conservative bona fides are likely to ensure a 6-3 conservative majority on the court, which could endanger key Democratic priorities. The future of the Affordable Care Act and so many other issues hanging in the balance. Voting rights, civil rights, the right to privacy and choice. But Republicans say she has the qualifications to be an ideal Supreme Court justice. At the end of this process, you will be confirmed to the United States Supreme Court. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Nadia, thank you. Now to Decision 2020. We're counting down the days until the election, and we are now just 22 days away. As Election Day approaches, there's a new twist in the fight over the voter registration deadline in our state. This comes as the Maricopa County Recorder is warning about possible scams. Team 12's Matt Uris explains. Matt? A judge pushed back the deadline until October 23rd. It came after a couple of advocacy groups challenged the original voter registration deadline of October 5th. They basically argued that because of the pandemic, groups didn't have a chance to sign up potential voters. Well, now Secretary of State Katie Hobbs is seeking a courtroom compromise that would cut short the judge's extension, arguing it could delay the ballot count. 
She's asking for a deadline around October 16th. No matter what, new voters who have registered since the judge's ruling would be protected. As for the voter scam 12 News has been tracking, Maricopa County recorder Adrian Fontes says the scammers are working to steal your personal information by making you think your voter registration profile is incomplete. Take a listen. Whenever you get something like that, you want to check with us first to make sure that it is us. So keep this in mind. The government is not sending out emails warning everyone that their voter profile may be incomplete. To dodge the scams, and here's a couple important tips from the AG's office, be sure not to click on any suspicious emails or websites, and know this, the government is not soliciting you about incomplete voter information. So if you get something like that, simply ignore it. In Phoenix, Matt Yuris, 12 News. Some great tips there, Matt. Thank you. Remember, we put everything you need to know about Decision 2020 in one easy to find place on our website. Just head over to 12news.com slash plan your vote. President Trump signing a new law focused on helping law enforcement agencies solve cases involving missing and murdered Native Americans. Savannah's Act aims to help police track, solve, and prevent crimes against the Native American community. The law pushes the Department of Justice to team up with American Indian tribes to create national law enforcement guidelines to help with these kinds of cases. Savannah's Act was named after a Native American woman who was brutally murdered in North Dakota. Today we're celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day. We asked members of the Native American community just what today means to them. Take a listen. Uh, it just literally means to be yourself. Yap esh a kubernez ninchia mesa. When we do say something like Indigenous people, there's this kind of lump effect that happens, and we're not monolithic. It means embracing your culture and where you come from. Live good with the earth and walk in beauty. Yes, sir. So you ask a thousand people what this, what indigeneity is, and you'll get a thousand different answers. Really just to live your life as your ancestors wanted you to. To live good with the earth. So we, we all can walk in beauty, not just, you know, not just the indigenous population, but, you know, the people, the world. And for me, as a, as a Lakota Ina, as a Lakota mother uh, and two-spirit storyteller, um, indigeneity. Um, it doesn't have to be Navajo. It can be, you know, we're out, we're out here in um, yeah. in Phoenix, and yeah, it's we got we have Pimas, Tios, Bartahota Autumns, and um, all these other um, Zunis, all these other people here too. Yeah, it's a land and language responsibility to my ancestors, to my present day communities, um, and the next generations. It means you have an obligation to educate yourself on who you are and where you come from. I think it's important because, like I told my son before too earlier. Um, we contributed a lot to society. Before civilization, we contributed a lot. And, um, you know, it, it would be nice to have some of that, you know, recognition. But if it keeps, you know, like we said, you know, if it keeps everybody moving, if it lets people walk in beauty, you know, let it be. Let it be. Yeah. The culture is so beautiful. Turning now to the latest COVID-19 numbers across Arizona from the State Department of Health Services. This morning, they're reporting 475 new cases, and that means more than 225,000 people in Arizona. Some positive news to report, though, no new deaths reported today. As the number of COVID-19 cases climb in most states, the CDC says it's discovering a pattern. The percentage of positive coronavirus test results start going up among those under 25 about a month before a county is designated as a virus hotspot. Dr. Deborah Burks, a White House Coronavirus Task Force member, says the amount of asymptomatic spread is large. When you start to look at these college data, that may be up to 80% of individuals under 30 are asymptomatic, and we're still getting the data from all of the colleges. CDC researchers say understanding and tracking positive test rates by age group could help public health officials identify future hotspots, as well as better prevent and prepare for a rise in cases. As the temps get cooler, Dr. Burks urges everyone to keep their masks on and their guards up. Hashtag most clicked. Here are the stories piquing everyone's interest right now. An 11 year old in Louisiana is charged with stealing this school bus right here. 
Police say the boys saw it at a Head Start school, climbed inside, and somehow figured out a way to start it, then took off. When authorities realized just what was happening, dozens of police cars began pursuing the bus. In addition to theft of a motor vehicle, that boy's now charged with aggravated flight, damage to property, and assault. Tech fans, listen up. Apple's expected to introduce a new line of iPhones this week after weeks of delays due to the pandemic. It's expected we're going to see four new iPhones ranging in sizes up to 6.7 inches, which would be its largest screen yet. The invitation to the virtual event uses the phrase high speed, which hints the new models take advantage of emerging 5G wireless networks. Only a fraction of smartphones sold in 2020 so far were fully equipped for 5G capabilities. All right, look at this. Two mountain lion cubs saved from a California wildfire. They're now at the Oakland Zoo. How beautiful are they? The zoo posted this video of the female cubs on social media on Sunday. You can see the cubs getting medical treatment and being cleaned up. The two join a male club that was rescued from the Zog fire just last week. In the wild, mountain lion cubs typically stay with their moms for about two years until they can hunt and survive on their own. Because these cubs are orphaned, they can't be released back into the wild. and They will likely be placed with a zoo. So sweet. Time now for the look ahead. The stories are going to be talking about a bit a little bit later on today. Have you ever wished you could just opt out of those political campaign texts to your phone? Yeah, well, turns out you can and it's easier than you might think. We'll show you how. Plus, Bargs and Baby, you've got to hear this story about a new super mom and what she had to go through for her newest family member.